Hi there. Welcome to Protect Your Identity from Cyber Fraud. What to know and what to do. I will be your guide. My name is Paul Zarling. I'm the managing partner from Client First Tax and Wealth Advisors. And I'm going to be covering a lot of details on identity theft, helping you detect, deter, and defend yourself, the three steps to do when it happens to you, and a ton of resources. Before I get into that, you may be wondering why I'm even doing this. Why, as a managing partner from an independent fiduciary wealth management firm, doing a presentation on identity theft? Well, here it is. We've had a number of clients have their identity stolen. We've helped them get everything fixed, but I got to tell you, there's a lot of heartache, there's a lot of sleepless nights, there's a lot of frustration, and there's a lot of time and money lost trying to get everything fixed. And so I put together a presentation based on everything that we've done, we've experienced, and along with information from the Federal Trade Commission, the FBI, and the United States Department of Justice to really help everybody protect their identity. It's that big of a deal, and it's that important to us. So whether you're a client or not, doesn't matter to us. We feel that this is important, and we want to show you how to protect your identity. You also may be wondering, how is this presentation set up? It's set up into four parts. The first part is identity theft on the rise, what you need to know. I'm going to cover a lot of facts and figures, the different types of identity theft, and some tips and tricks. The second piece is I'm going to show you how to deter, detect, and defend yourself against identity theft. And when it does happen, I'm going to show you how to act fast in the three steps you need to do immediately to limit the damage. And then I'm going to have a ton of resources for you to use on your own time that you can use. And they're going to be government resources, non-government resources, and for-profit enterprises. If there's one thing you take away from this presentation, I want you to know the three steps you need to do immediately once you think your identity is either stolen or compromised. It'll help you limit the damage and hopefully recover things a lot faster than if you didn't. You may be also wondering, who is this guy giving the presentation? I've got 20 years experience in business, I'm usually around business development, entrepreneurship. I've done it for publicly traded companies and private companies. I've traveled around the world. Matter of fact, I've covered 250,000 miles around the globe in about 18 months. It sounds glamorous, but once you're about halfway through, you realize every airport, hotel looks the same. Uh, I'm very happy with what I'm doing now and excited to have a business and help a ton of people and raise my kids. I have fought counterfeiters all around the globe, and I have been involved in the aerospace and defense industries. And so that's helped me realize just as much good as there are, is there in the world, there's just as much uh, people trying to take advantage of other people. And so that's one of the reasons... I've made this presentation as well, is I want to help protect you against people that are just trying to do you wrong. And finally, my background educationally, I'm a Marquette grad, so if you ever want to talk Marquette basketball, happy to do that at any time. Really looking forward to what they're doing and uh, where they're going with the program. Let's get into all the information. Identity theft on the rise. $16 billion was stolen from over 15 million U.S. consumers just last year alone. That's $10,400 worth of hassle, worry, frustration, and sleepless nights. Just to give you an idea of the broader context since 2012, you can see the chart for yourself on what's all been happening with fraud complaints, consumer complaints, identity theft. Everything's on the rise year after year after year. And that's taken from the Javelin Strategy and Research 2017 Identity Fraud Study. There's four main trends happening right now. I mentioned before, fraud leaping to a record high, plus two million. That's number one. Number two is card not present. Card not present means um, a transaction happens and the card's not there versus a POS is point of sale. So a point of sale is you're at the store and you swipe your own credit card. That's point of sale. Card not present means somebody in another state, another city, another country compromised your information and used it to their gain. That's got a 40% increase. The third thing is account takeover bounces back. 61% since 
spike from previous years. Victims paying about $263. That usually starts out with a criminal getting a little bit, a dollar, two dollars, and then moving it over and getting a ton of your information and a ton of your money. Lastly, number four, new account fraud continues unabated. Usually you find that out when you go to check your credit report and all of a sudden maybe you've enjoyed a credit score over 740 and all of a sudden it's in the 600s, 500s, 200s, or you're contacted by a debt collector. You need to know what's on your credit report and I'm going to show you how to do that consistently throughout the year and do it for free. Let's get into the 10 types of identity theft. That number alone should send a uh, shiver up your spine, the fact that we've reached double digits of types of identity theft. And I'm going to go through each one of them. The first one is financial. And I don't know that this one's a shocker, where criminals are trying to get access to your credit card, your bank accounts, etc., anything to get money away from you. The next one is insurance. This could be health insurance, auto insurance, etc., Anything to get money out of the insurance company using your name. Or using it for their benefit in your name. Same things happens with medical identity theft. And this happened where a Wisconsin Dells woman stole the identity of a Milwaukee woman and used it just to get medical prescription drugs. So if you get a bill you don't know, or all of a sudden you see medical prescription drugs happening, um, big warning that your identity has been either stolen or compromised. This next one is just like it sounds. Somebody takes your identity and creates a crime. So not only are you losing time and money, now you're racking up legal bills and having to deal with the legal system. That's no fun. Driver's license, it's real easy to create copies of driver's license. Social Security. Think about that. Where is your social security number? Your doctor's got it. Your dentist has it. Your attorney has it. Your business manager has it. Your money manager has it. Your teachers might have it for your kids. I mean, everybody's got it. So you really need to know how they're handling it. And I'm going to give you the questions and things you need to do later on in the presentation of how to safeguard your social security number. Synthetic identity theft. This one is on the rise. Most people think of identity theft where they take your social security card, your number, your birthday, your address, etc., and make another you. That's the normal pattern. Synthetic is where they'll take your birthday, your friend's date of birth, I'm sorry, address, someone else's social security card, etc., and make a fake person and then go get, you know, money, access to insurance, etc. So they're making a synthetic person. Child identity theft, doesn't matter if they're two months old, two years old. Uh, if they're under 16, um, there may be a chance, a strong chance, where there's credit cards, a home loan, an auto loan, an apartment, etc. If you have kids or grandkids that are under age 16, you need to check the credit reports on their behalf. I'll show you how to do that later on. Tax identity theft. Happens more often than you think. You'll see it on the Wisconsin Revenue site that they're all over fraud and they're doing taking a lot of extra steps. So is the IRS. How it works is an identity theft steals your information, everything, files a return, the IRS issues a refund, and they get it all in their bank accounts. Later on, you file your legitimate tax return. The IRS sends you notice of duplicate filing. That is a big headache, a lot of frustration, a lot of heartache, and a lot of time and money lost. We've had an, two clients have this happen to. We've helped them fix everything. It took a long time to get everything back. But this is a very serious and can take a ton of time to get fixed, and there's just a lot of uncertainty around it. Lastly, deceased. We've had clients where there is a deceased person in their family, and one where... There was an attempt on the deceased identity. Thankfully, the person had the wherewithal and the insight to know that something strange was going on and reported it and was able to kind of uh, alleviate or um, cut it off at the pass, if you will, 
of not having that happen. But all it ha- takes is someone looking at an obituary, uh, whether it's online or in the papers, and gathering all that information and taking it all and creating a perfect identity or a synthetic identity, and they're off and running. So for those of you that have deceased family members, be careful what you all put in their obituary. Let's move on to how to avoid identity theft, particularly how to deter it, detect it, and defend it. So here's some warning signs to be aware of. First one is you start noticing mistakes in accounts or your explanation of benefits. If things aren't looking good or just not adding up, you need to make a phone call to whoever issued you that statement. The next one is regular bills go missing. If you don't think criminals aren't going to try to get your mail or your trash, whether it's physical or in the digital world, they're all over it. It's They're just looking for an address. They're looking for a name. They're looking for a birthday. They're looking for a social security number. Any one of those, and they're off to the races. Another sign is you can start to get calls from debt collectors from debts that aren't yours. You really need to know what's on your credit report. The next one is IRS. I covered that with tax fraud and identity theft. If you get a notice from the IRS, you need to act immediately. I'll show you how to do that. You start to get calls or mail about accounts in your child's name. As I mentioned before, if you have a child or grandchildren under the age of 16, you need to know what's on their credit report. And you can start to get calls or mail about accounts in a deceased name. Uh, deceased name. Uh, those things will start to tip you off on all what's going on. Because here's the reality. One in four consumers find errors on their credit report. There are irregularities. You need to know what they are and get them fixed. So just like when you buckle up, when you drive your car, or you lock your doors at night, you need to take guarding your identity as an everyday practice. Just make it a habit. It'll go so much easier, and it'll actually prevent things from happening because you'll be aware and you'll be on the lookout for it. And if criminals know that, they're going to stay away. You need to know your exposure. There's really four personas, and everybody fits into one of these to some degree, maybe some more than others, but let's just go through each of them. The first one is offline consumers. You're really exposed to less risk, but you have higher losses than other fraud victims. Why? Because it takes you like 40 plus days to figure it out. And by that time, the thieves have gotten away with a whole lot more finances or information or whatever to make your life a pain in the butt. The second one is social networkers. You really share your life in digital platforms. That automatically makes you a higher risk of account takeover fraud. So you just need to know that and be careful on what you do. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to make your digital life more safe. Third is e-commerce shoppers. It's very convenient. You need something, you order it, it's dropped off at your doorstep in a day or two. But you just need to know that's a higher risk. However, you can detect that uh, quickly within a week of it. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks there on how to uh, prevent yourself from any e-commerce fraud. Lastly, frequent online shoppers and social activities where you're really connected all the time. You're 30% more likely to be a fraud victim. And unfortunately, that lends itself to more of these consumers or females become an easy target. Whether you're male or female, if you're digitally connected, uh, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to um, prevent that and, and, and know what to look out for. So here we go. First things first, really know what's on your credit report. You can get it from the Experian, Equifax, or TransUnion. You have a right to a free credit report every 12 months. So here's what you do. There's three agencies. You request one every four months. So the first part of the year, get one from Experian. Second, third, get it from Equifax. Last third, get it from TransUnion. Go to annualcreditreport.com or one 322 8228 and request your free credit report. Second thing, read all the details on your statements. Make sure everything adds up, everything checks out all right. 
you see any irregularities, contact the person who has issued that statement to you immediately. Respond to all IRS notices. You can go to irs.gov slash individuals slash identity protection or 1-800-908-4490. Secure your social security number. Your doctor's got it, lawyer, dentist, a number of people have it. Make sure that you feel very comfortable that they're handling that number in a secure fashion. If not, demand another way that they can identify you in their system. You do not leave that social security number leaking out to the broader world. Protect your personal information. If you don't have a shredder, get one. Shred everything you can. If you're worried about documents, there are enough ways that your bank, credit card, retirement accounts, medical can be stored online, whether you do it personally or whether it's through the systems of your providers. Also, it's very important that you know those credit card statements and offers that you get in the mail, shred those. Thieves will find those and fill them out for you and open up a credit card. So just shred them. Take it out of their hands. Be alert to online impersonators. There's a lot of people that do crafty ways to try to get information out of you. Always be on your toes. Just, just when you're online, just be, well, let's just use this term, trust but verify. I mean, it's so easy to impersonate somebody and try to get information out of you. If it looks, smells, sounds suspicious, it probably is. Here's a big one. Your passcodes. If you have a four, six, eight, ten character password, too weak. It's your responsibility to have a very secure passcode. And you can do that with 12 characters using numbers, letters, and symbols. And making sure you update your antivirus spyware and firewall on your computers and your smart devices. I'll get more into that in the future. But a 12 character passcode is the name of the game. It takes forever to try to crack that. And it's the best way to prevent access to your phones, smart devices, and computers. Protect your Wi-Fi and your internet. If you're at a coffee shop or some public domain, really, truly do not use the Wi-Fi. It's so easy to hack and so easy to get into your information. Also, with your Wi-Fi at your home, secure that with a very long passcode. There's too many stories out there where an individual went into a neighborhood and parked their car outside a house and used that unsecured Wi-Fi and use it to hack into everyone's information. So lock down your Wi-Fi at your home. Also, encrypt your data. Google search your device name, whether you have a Samsung smartphone or an iPhone smartphone, and encrypt and follow the instructions to encrypt your data. Lastly, on this piece, when you're shopping online or you're putting your information in somewhere to get information or request information, look for the HTTPS and padlock symbol. That'll know, they'll signal to you that they have a high amount of encryption available and secure to keep your information safe. In regards to your smartphones, protect them. They normally come with four character or digit passcodes. I'd up it to six, and I'd also use a double opt-in. I'll explain what a double opt-in is later, but those two things with six characters or six digits and using the double opt-in will really thwart um, criminals because if your phone gets stolen, it makes it really hard to get back in there and hack it. Okay, motivations and targets for criminals. Just a little bit so you know where criminals are coming from. I'm going to cover four things here, and it can seem kind of intimida intimidating, but when you break it down into its parts, you'll see what's all going on and how things are interconnected. And once you know that, knowing is half the battle, you can protect yourself from it. The first one is a motivation of social political gain, and they're going after organizations. 
that could be damaging someone's reputation. That could be hacking into uh, infrastructure and shutting down businesses or electrical grids, which has happened on the East Coast or even in California, or you know terrorist activities. The second one is where you have more of a financial motivation, but you're still targeting broader organizations, right? With tax refunds, you're going after the state or the U.S. federal system. Um, you're trying to get after some wire transfers. You're trying to get after medical fraud or Social Security fraud. So you're targeting uh, state administrations or federal administrations, banks, foundations, hospitals, etc. The third one, and what is financial motivation, it's going after the individual. They're looking for your documents and identification. They're looking or trying to get after your mobile ID. They're trying to get after your bank accounts. And then the fourth one is more of a social, political, and individual where the social media attacks, targeting vulnerable groups like criminals, uh, sorry, like children or elderly. Uh, I got to tell you, online gaming sales for kids have become a prime target for thieves. So if you have a kid or grandkid that's playing a lot of online games, be careful what information they're putting out there because that can be used to take either their identity or their parents' identity. So be aware of that. So here's the full picture. And as I mentioned before, it can be intimidating, but once you know kind of the motivations and the targets um, and what they're after, you can use that to protect yourself and take the steps every day to prevent um, being vulnerable. All right, three steps to do when you're a victim because you really need to act fast to limit the damage. You want to place a fraud alert, you want to order your credit reports, and you want to create an identity theft report. Let me show you what you're going to do for each one of those steps. The first step, when you place a fraud alert, you're going to contact one of the three credit reporting companies. There's three, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Equifax, you can reach at 1-800-525-6285 or go online to Equifax.com. Experian is at 1-888-397-3742 or at Experian.com. TransUnion is at 1-800-680-7289 or TransUnion.com. So the first step, place a fraud alert at one of the three credit reporting agencies. Next, you're going to contact all three of them. Identity theft victims get a copy for free. Let them know that. There's all the information again. Equifax, 1-800-525-6285, Equifax.com, Experian, 888-397-3742, Experian.com, TransUnion, 1-800-680-7289, TransUnion.com. That's the second step. Contact all three. Next, contact the Federal Trade Commission. How do you do that? 1-877-438-4338 or identitytheft.gov. That's how you contact the Federal Trade Commission. And then know your local police, whether you call your town chief of police, your county sheriff. Because you're viewing this, you live in a different municipality than I do. Maybe you live in the same one. You need to know your local police number. So those two together, Federal Trade Commission and your local police. Here's why. Your identity theft affidavit and your police report equal your identity theft report. Say that again. Your identity theft affidavit and your police report equal your identity theft report. So when you contact the FTC at 1-877-438-4338 or identitytheft.gov and your police, you'll have your identity theft report. That'll be so critical in working with insurance, with banks, credit card, whoever it is, and law enforcement to help make things correct. Again, your identity theft affidavit and your police report equal your identity theft report. So the three steps again, place a fraud alert, order your credit reports, and create an identity theft report. And your identity theft report is with your identity theft affidavit and the police report. When I give this presentation live, I get a number of questions, and I boil it down to the nine that I get the most often. So here we go. The first one is, what about a credit freeze? A credit freeze is it's kind of a proactive approach where you work with the three credit reporting agencies and just say, everything's frozen. And it puts everything on lockdown, so it's tough to open up new lines of credit. 
So there is a peace of mind to that. But there is an element of if you're needing a new credit card or if you want a new car loan or a home, whatever you're trying to do, financially speaking, it's an extra step in time to remove the freeze and then go after um, what you're needing to purchase. So for some, it's worth the hassle. For others, it's not. So putting a credit freeze is really an individual answer. Uh, you know what it is. If you want to do it, great. If you don't, fine too, but also know on how to protect your credit otherwise. So that's what happens with a credit freeze. Second one is, how firm can I push back on those requesting my social security number? Whether it's your doctor, your dentist, your accountant, lawyer, whoever. Here's the deal. If you don't get really strong answers to why they need it, how it's going to be used, and how they're going to protect it, you can totally push back. There are other ways that they can use to individually identify you than just your social security number. They use it as an easy way, but like I said, if you don't get the answers you need, then don't provide it to them. Why a 12-character passcode? Here's why. Criminals, whether they're here in the state, different country, doesn't matter. You can pick up equipment for under $3,000 to start cracking codes. And that equipment can do 1 trillion combinations per second. Think about that. 1 trillion combinations per second. So when you have a 12-character passcode, them trying to break it, at 1 trillion combinations per second will take them 17,134 years. So unless you're planning to live that long, use a 12-character passcode. It's just going to take forever. Now, if you make it easy, it'll make less time. So if you make a 12-character passcode where it's your favorite sports team and the name of your pet together, that's not real easy. That's why you need to have letters, numbers, and characters in whatever order they are to make it a really challenging passcode and make them go 17,134 years and try to figure it out. The other thing is related to this is how often do you change your passcode? I do it monthly. That's me. Maybe a little overkill, but I would say at least two to three times a year you want to change your passcodes. So now you're making it all the more difficult for them to get into your account. I get this question a lot. Who do you recommend for identity theft recovery services or even prevention services? As a fiduciary, I don't get into that game of recommending. However, there are a lot of avenues out there for you to research on who's best for you. One of those is consumersadvocate.org. They provide a lot of independent editorial reviews. I'll provide a link at the end where they studied the top identity theft recovery services and they came up with five here are the five identity force lifelock identity guard id shield and protect my id.com disclaimer the list these companies listed above are provided for informational purposes only they're not endorsed they're not approved they're not affiliated with client first in any shape or form it's just information People ask, how does Client First keep information secure? A couple different ways. We use 250-bit encryption on all of our systems. That's bank-level type security. We use two-factor authentication for logging into all of our different systems using computers, smart devices, or phones. We have a two-step authentication. Where our data is stored and housed, is ISO 27001. That's an information security management system certified to. FISMA compliance. And then the building we're in is locked. And then we also have secure procedures for our own suite in the building that we're in. Related to client first, some people ask why we're a fiduciary. It's just the way we operate. We put the client first. We're independent. We can be objective versus maybe someone else or a different financial firm where they're really worried about a product and selling a product. For example, we, we give advice. 
we're fee only, we're representing our client, they're paying us. We're open and objective, we're aligned with the person's goals. We've got an ethical and legal duty to protect you as our clients. We don't go off of quotas. Other, other firms kind of do the opposite, but the way we're kind of wired, the way we kind of operate in our systems, it's, it's really strong toward being a fiduciary and taking care of others, which is really why we're doing this presentation as well for free and providing it to the broader public. It's just, at the end, taking care of our client. How we take care of our clients? Well, let me just tell you a story. So there's John and Susie. John and Susie, everyone's got a lawyer, accountant, tax person, financial person. You know, the list goes on and on. And they're trying to figure out how do I line all these different things up? How do I make sure that I don't run out of money? How do I make sure my goals are met? And it can be really frustrating for the two of them and then, you know, cause some uh, maybe even some, some arguments. So we put together a model where we said, hey, we're going to be a fiduciary. We're going to have experts in all the different areas that people need and put a plan together. So and we can track everything to make sure they're on track and they're meeting their goals and they have a documented plan on how they're going to get there. John and Susie feel great about that. All the pieces fit together. It's all under one roof. They don't have to worry about driving all over the place for their different team members. And they feel very good about their future. So that's how we help people. And we're unique in the sense that we use three proprietary systems. Holistic plan, putting all your different things together with your investments, your insurance, your estate planning, your Social Security, your taxes. Putting it all together into one plan. Looking at a time horizon, now, soon, and later. I think most people get now or later and miss the soon. We put all that together. And then we have the adaptive investment management system. So all three of these systems are proprietary to us. We created the adaptive investment management system. Anything that can be done on Wall Street, we can do here on Main Street. And uh, we feel very good about getting that system built, and it's working great for our clients. So all three of these work together, make us unique. You may find some fiduciaries or independents with one or two, but they're not going to have all three. How do you learn more? You can request a free consultation. You know, a consultation, you learn one of three things. What we do, what you want, just don't align, and that's fine. You may learn what we do and what you want match up, but the timing's off. It's okay, too. What we do and what you want match up and things get started. We realize how we're set up and the way we operate. Not every client's for us, and we may not be for every client, and that's totally fine. It's a great litmus test on how to operate. But if people are, information, are really interested in having a fiduciary work on their behalf, they can get a hold of us at our phone number, our email, or on our website. That handles the frequently asked questions. Let's get on to the rest of the presentation. I've covered how identity theft is on the rise. I've covered how to deter, detect, and defend yourself against identity theft. I've also covered how to act fast in the three steps. Now I'm going to get into resources that you can use on your own. But before I get there, let's review what we've covered. Identity theft, they're trying to get after your stuff, whether it's through online purposes or mail purposes. Protect your identity. Bad guys are all over the world, even in your backyard. It's just a fact. If you know their motivations, you know what they're going after, it makes it easier to prevent them getting it. So keep your information secure, your credit cards, bank statements. Look for all those different things. Inspect your statements. Respond to the IRS. Keep your information secure. Get yourself a shredder. Make sure your computers and all your malware and spyware are up to date. Get your passcodes, 12 for your computer, 12 characters for your computer, 6 digits for your smartphone. And when it does happen... That your identity theft, uh, pardon me, your identity is stolen or compromised. Act quickly. You've got those three steps to get a hold of the credit agencies, your local police, and the Federal Trade Commission. Here's your resources. They're in three categories: government, nonprofit, and for-profit. First, government resources. 
There's the FTC at ftc.gov forward slash ID theft. OnGuardOnline.gov. StopFraud.gov. IDTheft.gov. United States Postal Inspection Service has theirs with the PostalInspectors.uspis.gov. Social Security Administration at SSA.gov. And FBI.gov. You may already have been screenshotting this presentation, which is totally fine. Uh, do it now if you need to um, keep these web addresses available to you. I'm going to keep going with nonprofit. Hey, for those that live in the state of Wisconsin, privacy.wi.gov. Here we go with nonprofit. Consumer Action is consumer action.org. Identity Theft Resource Center is idtheftcenter.org. National Fraud Information Center is www.fraud.org. Privacy Rights Clearinghouse, privacyrights.org. AARP also has one, aarp.org, forward slash money, forward slash scams, dash fraud, forward slash. Then there's the National Association of Attorneys General, naag.org. Here's the for-profit resources. I mentioned earlier the top five identity theft protection services. It's a big, long address. I shortened it for you. It's bit.ly forward slash two, lowercase k, lowercase r, uppercase j, the number eight, uppercase r, uppercase v. That'll take you to their research and their report. And here's the five that they mentioned as the top five identity theft protection services. The first one is Identity Guard at IdentityGuard.com, IdentityForce.com, IDShield.com, LifeLock.com, and ProtectMyID.com. And as I mentioned before, anything listed above is for informational purposes only. They're not endorsed, not approved, not affiliated with Client First Tax and Wealth Advisors. It's just for your information. Here's the sources I use for this in addition to our experience. Insurance Information Institute has identity theft and cybercrime. Javelin Strategy produced the 2017 identity fraud study. The Balance has the many types of identity theft. The FBI has white collar crime and identity theft. U.S. Department of Justice has identity theft and identity fraud. The Federal Trade Commission has a number of them, one's on identity theft, one's on child identity theft. And there is a cool website from identitytheft.gov forward slash info dash loss dash or dash stolen. All very helpful resources. So thank you for viewing and I hope you found it helpful. We covered a lot in a short amount of time. We covered the identity theft, what's on the rise and the different facts and figures. It just keeps going up, so we really want to protect yourself. We've covered how to deter, detect, and defend yourself against identity theft. I've showed you how to act fast in the three steps you need to do, and I've given you a ton of resources to use on your own time. And I wanted to put this together to help everybody protect themselves from identity theft. It's not, it's not going to go away, and hopefully you can use it for yourself and for your loved ones and keep yourself um Keep yourself safe from criminals and keep your information and financial situation and emotional health situation in a good spot. Thanks again for viewing and take care.